In the previous video, I left off on caching the point cloud to save that data, make things go uh, faster. What I'm going to do now is with the point cloud selected, I'm going to go to simulation. I'm going to go to load cache from selection to create myself a cached point cloud. Um, remember that, that little trick from before where the original simulated point cloud, um, even though it's hidden, it's still going to calculate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the multi-physics node and turn off solve. And now that should be fixed. So if I hit play, get my particles, they go by a lot faster now. And it's totally cached. And I can scrub forwards and backwards in the timeline. So I can see what this looks like when I get to around frame 1,000. It'll look something like this. Okay? So basically the glass just continues to fill up. So that's 1,000 frames. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to introduce you to um, something called post-sim effects. Um, a Lagoa post sim effect is basically a sort of extra effect that we can uh, layer on top of our simulated effects. Okay, so what kind of post effects? Well, there's a whole bunch of them. I can't go over every single one, but one example is one where you can make the particles change color based on their density or velocity. Another effect, which is the one I'm going to do in this video, is creating bubbles and extra little effects like that, like debris, bubbles, things like that inside of your fluid. And this works really good if you're doing some kind of simulation of a fluid that has a lot of bubbles. For example, uh, soda, like if you're doing a Coke commercial or some kind of soda or something like that, or any fluid that needs bubbles. Um, before I can get to that point, I first need to create a fluid mesh for this. So I'm going to take the simulated point cloud that I've just created, and with it selected, I'm going to go to the Create menu. I'm going to go to Surface from Point Cloud. Create my polygonized mesh like we've done before a couple of times. And um, this polygonizer, let me change the name so it makes a lot more sense. I'm going to call this Wine Polygonizer. just makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to turn off all of these blur parameters over here because what I'm going to be doing is using the uh, Fluid Shaper to get the uh, shape of this mesh going. So I hit Play. There's my mesh. What I'll do is I'm going to increase the detail level a bit, get it into the 3.5 range, something like that. Take the ISO level, and I'm going to leave the ISO level alone for now. I'll change it after I add the fluid shaper. So with the wine polygonizer selected, let's go to the deform menu, and let's go to the create logo of fluid shaper. Now you can adjust these settings however you want. I think I'm going to stick with the defaults. The defaults for the fluid shaper actually uh, work out pretty good. So there's the fluid, it drops into my glass, simulates very, very nicely. Even though things are going a little bit slow right now, but it's obvious why that is. If I render this out, see what I have. Looks pretty cool. Um, one thing that I need to do is I need to take the point cloud, which is the cached point cloud, and I'm going to hit F3 then go to the visibility settings and turn off render visibility. I don't want those little uh, spheres rendering out. So this is what we should end up with. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is um, I've actually created a very nice wine material we can use. So if I hit control 7 to open up the material manager, you can see I have a wine material already set up for us ready to go. So I'll select the polygonizer mesh, right click on the wine material and hit assign to selection. And now our wine material is going to have this really nice red sort of wine material to it. You can see that it's a mental ray architectural material which makes it look very uh, realistic. It looks like a very nice natural looking fluid. Um, so I've got that part done. Let me see what is next. Mm, what we need to do next to get this uh, post sim effect work. There's a couple of ways we can go about it. Uh, the way I'm going to go about it is by creating basically three point clouds. Okay. Now at this point the process to get the post sim effect work for the bubbles is going to get a little bit complex. Okay. So just bear with me. I'm not going to go too fast at this point because there's a lot of nodes that need to be connected here and a lot of stuff needs to happen for this to work. Okay. So um, basically the way this works is we created our first point cloud, which was the simulated one. Then we cached it and we created a duplicate point cloud that reads the cache data. That's the cache point cloud we have now. That second point cloud is the one that drives the polygonized mesh. Okay, 
the wine mesh, which is this one, the wine polygonizer. Okay, what we need to do is create another point uh, cached point cloud, and that one is going to drive the bubbles in the fluid. Okay, so to do that is actually pretty easy. I've already cached this original point cloud, so what I'll do is I'll select the original point cloud, I'll go to simulation, and I'm going to go to uh, load cache from selector. When I do that, a second point cloud is, cr is uh, created for us. Now, so that I can differentiate between these two, I'm going to rename this point cloud. Let me call it post sim wine, I guess simulated point cloud. And let me also hit F3. I'm going to go to the display and I'm going to change its wireframe color to maybe like a bright green. Just so that when I look in the explorer, I can immediately see it and identify it, which makes perfect sense. Okay, so now that I have that second point cloud in here, uh, what I need to do is select that second point cloud, okay? And this point cloud is going to be the one that's going to have the, um, the post sim effect applied to it, alright? And the way this is going to work is like so. We select the post sim uh, point cloud, the green one that I just created. And what I'm going to do is go to the particles menu. I'm going to go to the after emission menu. And under Lagoa particles, we have a few uh, different things that we can uh, select. Okay. If we go to the cache sim post effect, there's quite a few. Like I said, there's quite a few uh, different effects we can use. So there's things like advec points, density color gradient, velocity color gradient, things like that. The one that I'm going to choose is the advec points. Now, you're going to get this question or this pop-up window from Softimage, and it's going to basically ask you what kind of uh, cache simulation is needed. Okay, so choose a mode. We can select either selected cloud is already cached, or we can select create a new cache cloud from selection. Since the current point cloud is already cached, I'm going to go with the first option, selected cloud is already cached. Then I'm going to hit OK. Now, when that happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh the ice tree down here. Right now I have the green point cloud selected, the post sim one. And if I look at the ice tree, it's got this new ice tree with a Lagoa Advec points uh, node attached to it. And this is the PPG over here, okay? So basically the way this is going to work is the bubbles are going to be created by this uh, node right here, the Advec points. And we have some parameters here for things like that. For example, the random delete bubbles, uh, remove bubbles over here, stuff like that, distance to main bubble, things like that, okay? But um, this isn't finished yet. We don't have it working uh, quite yet. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually connect the polygonized mesh to this ice tree, all right? So the way to do that is very easy. Just go in the Explorer, drag and drop the wine polygonizer mesh into the ice tree, take the value plug that into po the polygonized mesh uh, input port of the Advec points node and that's pretty much it. Now one other important thing that we're going to do is we're going to come into the Advec points uh, PPG and what we're going to do is we're going to turn on this option here that says remove outside polygonizer and right now we really can't see the bubbles that's because they're very very tiny so let me take this option off let me go back to the first frame and just so we can see this a little bit better, I'm going to take the polygonizer and I'm going to mute it so we don't see it right now. And when I hit play, you're going to see all the particles and stuff coming down. Uh, we really can't see the bubbles right now. Turn off the remove outside polygonizer uh, option over here. I'm going to show you something. For the moment, let me do this. Let me take the, the blue point cloud, the first cached one. I'm going to hit H to hide it. And now you should be able to see these bubbles. They're very, very tiny right now. Very hard to see. By default, they're very, very small. But you can see them. If I'm going to increase their size. So let me take the size base value and increase it. Those are the bubbles right there. They're very big right now. It looks like the first point cloud, but it's actually not. These are the bubbles that are actually created uh, for the uh, point cloud. Okay. By default, like I said, they're very, very small. Usually you want to keep them small, but you have the ability to come in here and change their size and stuff. So that's actually what I'm going to do. So let me turn on the Remove Outside Polygonizer option. And let me also turn up the base value here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for value of uh, 0 0.001, which will make them a little bit bigger. If I turn this option off, you can see, well, they're not really that much bigger. Uh, actually, what I wanted to do was 0 0.01. There we go. Now you can see them a little bit better. They're uh, slightly uh, bigger. And for the size variance, let me go with something like 0 0.025. There we go. Now we can see them uh, a lot better. Okay, that uh, that looks pretty good. So let me turn on the Remove Outside Polygonizer option. Let me unmute the Polygonize Mesh. I'm going to hit Play. There's my mesh. Let me go to Wireframe Mode. When I go to Wireframe Mode, I can clearly see the bubbles inside the mesh. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a Render Region. And it might be a little bit hard to see at first glance, but if you look carefully in the fluid, we can clearly see that there's bubbles inside the fluid. See that? If I make the bubbles really, really big, obviously you'll be able to see them a lot better. So I'm going to exaggerate them just so that you can actually see them in the fluid. And there they are. There's the bubbles. Okay? Now, they don't look much like bubbles right now, obviously. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, don't make them so big. Okay? Down here in the shape, we can change the shape of the bubbles. By default, they're set to blob shape, which is why they look the way they did when I just rendered a moment ago. Uh, you can set them to little uh, spheres. You can set them to boxes, whatever you want. I'm going to set them to uh, blobs, which is the default. Okay? And I like to leave all of these settings at the default except for like the size variance and size value and stuff like that. You can also control the amount of bubbles by removing them. So if you increase the remove bubbles parameter, you're going to get less bubbles. If you decrease it, you're going to get a ton of bubbles. So if you're doing like a soda type of fluid like Coca-Cola or something like that, you might want to increase the bubbles. If you're doing something like wine, for example, you might want to have some bubbles but maybe decrease it a bit by increasing this remove bubbles parameter. Okay, so I'll leave it at the default. Um, the other thing that you know controls the look of the bubbles is the shader because the bubbles have a shader. Uh, with the bubbles selected, let me actually select the bubbles, open up the render tree. You can see I'm just using the default Fong scene material. That's not what I want to do. So I've conveniently created a wine bubbles material, which is basically a uh, mental ray architectural shader. With uh, it's clear. So I'm going to right click and hit assign to selection with the bubble selected. And now the bubbles are going to get this other shader. Might be a little bit hard to see here in the render region because the bubbles are so small. But um, with this shader, I just found on my own that this looks uh, a little bit nicer. So you could see almost the bubbles right there. They're very um, subtle right now. I didn't want the bubbles to look too strong. But if you want the bubbles to be, you know, have more of an effect, then add more bubbles and make them bigger and you're going to see that you end up with a much stronger uh, bubble effect so you end up with a lot more bubbles inside that fluid and the reason that we turn on the remove outside polygonizer option over here in the uh, advec points ppg is because that's going to make sure that you don't get bubbles outside of the mesh because if you have bubbles outside the mesh it would look really really weird and would probably look wrong and that's most likely what you don't want to do so you have the option to activate that and um, get rid of those bubbles outside the mesh. So here we can see, if you look over here, there's a bubble right there. There's some more here. Again, if you want the bubbles to you know, really pop out, increase their size and add more bubbles to your effect. Okay? So that's a type of post-sim effect that we can create to make our fluid have more personality or just you know make it look more natural and stuff so let me render from here see what this looks like you know I encourage you to play with these settings and try to come up with something you know that looks pretty cool play around with it this is just one way to work with the Lagoa POSIM effect so pretty useful effect and you can see the bubbles right there very clearly in the dark area which makes the uh, fluid look uh, a lot more natural and more realistic you know that's going to do it for using this type of post sim effect. So just to recap, it's actually a much simpler process than it seems. Create your simulation cloud, cache it, create a cached point cloud, create a polygonized mesh to look like fluid and attach it to that point cloud. Okay. Um, then create a second cached cloud 
and add the advec points uh, effect to that second cache cloud. Then just make sure you turn on the remove outside polygonizer option here and adjust the bubbles to whatever look you want. Create a shader for your bubbles and your fluid, whatever you want. And um, there you go. You're pretty much done. Right. So that's going to do it for uh, this video here. I'm going to end this one here. And in the next one, we're going to look at another type of post-sim effect that you might find pretty interesting uh, for doing really cool-looking fluid effects with Lego and Softimage.